So you have already briefly seen Christina. Um, Christina Hupner is the project lead and community facilitator for the open source Mahara ePortfolio project. She has been working on the project at Catalyst in Aotearoa, New Zealand for 10 years. Having found her way into the this, into this software in 2008 while she was still in Europe. Christina is keen to connect community members to learn from each other and share their ideas with the rest of the community to foster the portfolio pedagogy and practices, not just within our community, but also the wider education one and also to find ways to connect other tools to establish a learning environment where it is easy to exchange information. So without further ado, I will pass you to Christina Hupner with her presentation, Stronger Through Integration. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. I'm really happy to be here today, um, 10 years after my first Kohakon. I was lucky to arrive in New Zealand mid-June that year, um, so that I was roped into the organization of the conference, and hence why you see so many photos. And it's been really great, um, even though I haven't been able to work with the Koha team as closely as back at that uh, first, in, in that first year that I was at Catalyst, to see what has become of the community and the product and kind of look at it from the sidelines. I'm not going to talk to you about Mahara today, um, but kind of really want to have a session where we think about well, what can integrations be like. But as Catherine had already mentioned, um, I found my way from Europe, and so originally I'm from a relatively small town, not maybe in New Zealand terms, that we did have 20, 28,000 inhabitants um, in Saxony. Went to university in Dresden, and then had my first full-time job at the uh, university in Munich. After that, I made my way to Luxembourg, where um, I got to know about Mahara. But actually, I had heard about Koha already many years before, as I said on my tweet in 2004, when our university project at LMU München was looking for a library catalog that we could actually install and that we could work with without needing to go to our big university library. So that's when I then applied for the job at Catalyst, I was really happy to see that there was a Koha team actually in the company, and I looked back at that time. And so in 2010, I made my way down here, which seemed to have been much easier than this year, so I'm happy that I had made that decision 10 years ago. And since then, I have been working on Mahara. It's a fantastic open source project that is much younger, of course, than Koha. And so we've always been looking at what the community has been doing, how things work in the Koha community, contrasting them, how they work in our community, what we can learn from each other, and how we can ideally also integrate certain things. And so our community is currently still primarily involved or primarily seen in the education sector. So we work with universities and also schools. Here in New Zealand, you might have heard of myportfolio.school.nz, which is made available for free to all schools here in the country. And um, we are also in the fortunate position that we are working with other organizations that have accreditation or assessment requirements. Because in contrast to a learning management system, Mahara allows you to gather all the learning that you have, um, that you have undertaken, be that in formal contexts or informal contexts, and showcase them, work with them, reflect on them. So it is really very, in some ways, similar to what libraries offer, lifelong learning. And so instead of having resources there to do the learning, we are taking the learning and then have people reflect on them, work with them, see what they want to do differently next time they undertake a similar project or um, something the like. And of course, also talk to each other, like we do in libraries, um, connect people with each other, learn from each other. And that's kind of where this session is coming in today. And as I said, it's not going to be a presentation, so you'll not be listening to me much, much longer. Um, but I actually will really want you to get to work and want you to get to talk to each other. Um, because what I'm really interested in is how can we connect systems with each other? Because in an organization, just think of yours, so we are not looking at specific contexts. We have a technology tool. 
but we are not just working with one technology, we are working with multiples. So you have lots and lots of things, and what we can find, and of course not everybody has this set of tools, so please just replace any of the ones that you don't know about or that you don't use with the ones that you do have. We have lots of different purposes with these tools. So we have a Koha, Ideally, of course, everybody here in the room has one. Um, then you have a content management system where your website is built on. Then you might have a Mahada site as an e-portfolio tool. You might have a customer relationship management tool these days. Or in the university sector or school sector, probably still more of a student management system. You have a portal where you can kind of connect to all the things and find all of them. You have a learning management system and then you have an array of many, many other tools as well that are either just working on a computer, that are working just on a phone, or that your organization makes available, hosts themselves, or has it hosted by others. And so, of course, in such an ecosystem, none of these tools can really sit on its own. And if they do, typically they shouldn't really, because things that are in the CMS might have a connection to the customer relationship management tool, um, or they connect to the learning management system so that content from the LMS can also be presented immediately on the website. And so that goes a little bit towards um, the road that David took us on with the documentation yesterday, when he said a documentation can kind of be this normal thing of a reference guide, but these days ideally it is small objects, it is uh, topic-based, and once you've written one topic, you can use it elsewhere and you can put it in there so that you can have a tutorial or you can have your reference guide or you can build it with something else. And similarly here with these integrations, if we have the information sitting somewhere once, why do we have to manually or via CSV upload or anything like that, put it again into another system? Because as you know, if we already replicate one set of data twice, you're not, it's very hard to keep both in sync and make sure that the same data is always going to be in both systems at the same time. And now think of that just with these seven tools here. And so that is where the integrations come in because we can connect things to each other, granted on a typically very technical level, so just thinking about APIs or web services. We are not going to explore that area much, we can really want to think more about business analysis requirements or usability requirements. And so you connect things, but of course, also not just within your own ecosystem, but there are connections going elsewhere. So with the ePortfolio, for example, we have people embedding videos from YouTube or embedding presentations from SlideShare or from, from other tools. And that is already an integration. Granted, it is a very simple one. We don't really need web services for that. We just need an embed code. But can you imagine um, Caroline's talk with the plugins that she can then bring in videos where somebody showcases that plugin and you don't have to leave your OPAC library catalog. And so we have connections within our own ecosystem and connections outside because we are always connected to the internet and um, therefore can have those connections. And my question to you now is, where does Koha fit in here? How can we connect Koha? What sort of integrations either are there already, because there are, and which ones would you really, really like to see? And that's why I'd like you to go together, at least here in the room, where you have the possibility, turn to your neighbor or person in front or behind you and have a chat with them for about maybe five minutes, depending on how enthusiastic you are chatting. And think about what are you already doing at your organization to integrate Koha with other systems? And what are you missing? Where do you think would it be really good to allow for that integration already. And if you're watching this stream live, then you can go to that Padlet URL. I also just tweeted it. And you can put in your ideas of 
connections, integrations that already exist. And maybe some of you already know about them. Maybe some are hidden somewhere in a plugin database and we might need a plugin for that. And then which integrations do you desperately want so that you do not have to double up on information or you kind of have to have two or three systems available. Off you go. And if you're also here in the room, you're welcome to use that Padlet as well to jot down your ideas. And we'll see if there's anything coming through. And we already have the first contribution. Thank you very much. Single sign on is uh, one that we might not really think about as integration, but it sure is because we only have one password and don't need to set up accounts all the time, but they are coming immediately from the IDP. So until about 11.45, and then we'll come together and see what your ideas are.
We've got some good discussion in the room, so I'll give you just about a minute to finish it off. And as you can see on the Padlet already, there are some great ideas coming through. So we'll get to them shortly. Thank you so much for having contributed so many ideas. You've done all the work. And um, it's been really great also to see little groups forming and getting into that ideation phase that um, Joy talked us, uh, told us about um, yesterday during the afternoon session. And um, you've really demonstrated what she had taught us by brainstorming, putting all the ideas there without judgment, just letting the ideas flow. And we'll not be able to get to the filtering and narrowing things down. I leave that to additional Koha community meetings and seeing if you'd like to take any of these ideas with you. Um, but what we can also already see is there's already a lot of integration happening in the Koha community with Koha. Just kind of the almost by now probably stock standard single sign on with whatever system you have. Um, going to Overdrive Connection, to, to other ebook providers as well. Um, set 3950, so we don't even have to go to the modern age of um, connections, but that's been a standard that's been around for ages and connecting to it and getting records from it has been there probably already from the start. Um, please, uh, Rachel and Chris, do correct me if I'm wrong there. Uh, Chris, thanks to remember that it was 2003 that Koha got that capability. And that already connected you to the world and to lots and lots of different catalogs. Um, integration with newspapers publishers is already there. SIP2, book covers, which I think is being used in a number of libraries, really just also to pretty up the OPAC. So it doesn't necessarily have to be some really deep integration, but often these days we work very well when we see something visually. And so not having to create those pages manually, but having them come in or just click a filter, click a tag, and be able to bring all that to life for, um, for everybody who's coming to the library or who's looking at the library uh, catalog from home is something fantastic because it brings, I think, books much more to life than if we just read a title. Um, then we also have um, EDI ordering, DVD covers, and so on. But today, I'd really like to spend a few minutes on the new ideas that you've gathered. And some of them might not be as new, because you've probably already mulled them over a little bit um, in the past. So, um, is there anybody from the room who'd like to share what they've been thinking about, talking about, discussing? Was everything all well? Did you put your, your ideas also on the screen up here? They are all there. 
Rachel? So we've, we've got some financial obligations, of course, in every organization. And so Rachel and um, her community members from Toy Ohomai um, said finances, ERP systems, reporting is inc uh, increasingly important um, so that you can justify where things go and making that, of course, easier so that you don't spend a day or more per month just looking at that, but can really spend with your library community and doing the things that you do well. Not that you don't do reporting well, but it's kind of sometimes this, this evil thing that is sitting there and it just has to get done when it would be so much easier if it were done almost automatically. Separately, yeah. yeah separately, and so Rachel also mentions that when library, pat uh, library patrons go and uh, pay their rates, that they can also see their library in there and don't have to go to another system in order to see that, but they can see everything in one place, therefore making it much easier for them to budget and not having to remember, it, oh, I need to go here and there and there and there, but no, everything is really nice and centralized. So centralization is not always a bad thing. Um, decentralization is good and localization as well, but sometimes centralization just makes a lot of sense. Um, one thing for those of us that are working more on education is the book reviews. Um, have Koha connected to Mahara and vice versa so that book reviews can be shared directly, because as I mentioned, um, we want to reflect on learning, record learning, and talk about that learning in Mahara. And so having the book review as the actual artifact being displayed in the portfolio and then do the reflection around it rather than even just needing to copy and paste it in would be fantastic because then also if you, for example, have a read account or how many other people liked your book review to be displayed automatically, there is so much more rich information available. But to be honest, the one thing that I like best, and of course it had to come here hopefully from a room in Wellington so that nobody takes our title of the coffee capital away from us, is Koha to my coffee maker. So it will make coffee when I log in in the morning. Who favors that? We have at least one, one vote for, for this integration. Uh, so, so Chris, hopefully... It can be made possible. <laughs> um, then also reserve from within the learning management system. Again, we are kind of seeing in the education sector, but um, these days lots of organizations also have a learning and development department, so it is not just for unis or for schools. So it can also be very valuable in any sort of um, corporation or even smaller organizations that you don't have to leave your learning management system. That, somebody, um, that your lecturer can create a reading list, of course also automatically done by using a list in Koha, for example, that is pushed through to the LMS, and you even just have a button in the LMS next to it saying, I want to reserve this book, or I want to read it next once somebody else is done, instead of needing to wait, uh, even if it's just three, four seconds to connect to the library catalog. Maybe your university doesn't yet have single sign-on set up, so you have to log in and then connect and then find the book, make sure that the link is correct and all of that. With these integrations, we really also take a lot of workload away from those people that would otherwise have to maintain that because the lecturer wouldn't have to find a link from Koha and paste it somewhere to their reading list. Um, they can point and click, and then everything just is being displayed. So course reserves, we've already had that easier CMS integration to be able to display books like a cover flow on a website can be done currently already in some systems the hard-coded way, but the hard-coded way already has the word hard in it. So it's not as easy, and we kind of want to go for the easy parts. So hopefully somebody will be able to take that up to some of the popular content management systems that are being used in the Koha community, which I'm 
oftentimes probably also open source, um, in order to make that happen. And again, it is taking content from one place and displaying it somewhere else without needing to double it up. Push to current awareness systems from within Koha. That's also a really, really nice one. So I had to ask Chris for just to double check that I know what an awareness system is while you were all beefering away. And it is kind of the uh, having recommendations done personalized for you so that you are aware of what is happening, that you are aware of new books that have been um, added to the library or new events that the library is offering for your specialty area and not having to go to the library or subscribe to yet another newsletter or librarians needing to create 20,000 newsletters to cater to everybody in their organization, but rather do that via tags, via categorization, and then have the technology fiddle out who gets what, but not have a human doing that who could be doing some more fun stuff than trying to make sure that all the connections are correct. Because once set up, it should just work um, perfectly because then also we as people who use these systems have control because we can then say which filter we want to apply. Whether this month maybe it is or we are going on vacation because we can travel again and don't want to receive anything or just want to receive anything on travel related um, versus the next month we might change our opinion. And we don't have to go to a librarian or to an administrator and say, hey, can you please make that change? Because it's probably not happening since we all know that everybody is super busy and we might not want to bug them about it. But we can certainly bug a computer about it because they can't talk back. <laughs> and they can't say no because um, they'll take the load. And if you're using it with renewable energies, we even can feel good about it. Um, Koha book lists displayed in Moodle, so again, the um, integration with the learning management system. Uh, Koha and request tracker, tracking knowledge requests or reference requests. So really having a ticketing system or knowledge base. So again, kind of going back a little bit to what David already alluded to like yesterday afternoon um, in making knowledge available in these bite-sized pieces and making them also discoverable. And then by having the request tracker link it to something in Koha and bring those two things together. Um, email bounce backs. Capture bounce back messages from emails with management tools. Um, there I do not know much. I just know that bounce messages typically when, when an email kind of comes back because the recipient has left an organization um, that, oh, is that, that it often goes into Nirvana, but we want to have a management tool so that we can proactively then deactivate their accounts. Chris is nodding, so I must be on the right track. <laughs> Did learn something from the developers over my last 10 years. Uh, permanent URLs are not really permanent, need to be able to haul in the original file. Um, that doesn't have a lot there, so I'm kind of improvising on that a little bit and makes sense for me. Um, so sometimes people or sometimes websites go away and so of course then we lose the original content. Uh, you might discover it again in the web archive if you're lucky, um, but maybe not everything. And so I think what this might mean is that, you're, that yes, you are linking to that original and that you're kind of probably also making a copy of it and pulling it back in in case it um, is gone at some point so that you don't just end up with lots of broken links in your catalog. Was that what you were discussing, Joe? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so we're only halfway through, so I don't necessarily want to bore you with all my interpretations of things. Um, but you can read through it, and um, if you just look at the headings, uh, Koha to machine learning for analyzing mark errors. So it is what you're discussing here and also online is not just how to make the usability of systems better, but also kind of what's coming through 
um, allow for better management and administration of the data in order to always have the proper data, correct data and up-to-date data available. Connectivity to Google Classroom, again, learning management system, Wikidata, vocal recognition, accessibility, really, really um, important these days. Internet indexing systems to bring more things in from, from outside resources. Enhanced content of all types, integration with financial systems we've already had, electronic resource management. So again, the currently probably still called more atypical things that you manage in a library that are not books, um, probably manage those a bit more easily and um, display them as well. Um, pull article lists and links to magazines and linking, indexing, all really, really great ideas. And we haven't even gone through all the things that already exist in Koha. So do take a look at all of these. And maybe at next year's KohaCon, or maybe in two years, depending on what the workload is of everybody, we might see one of those ideas realized through the community. Um, maybe one of your organizations sponsored one of those features or helped um, create a patch or um, QA a patch or helped in any other way to document it or participate in other aspects of the release cycle. But hopefully, this um, gave you some ideas to further think about how you can integrate Koha with other systems in order to make your work easier, as well as also the ones of the patrons whom you serve um, through your library in order to help them use all the resources and the wealth of knowledge and information that you have gathered um, in your library. Thank you.